Adam Taxon here. Uh, I guess our target audience is the Harvard class of 93 or uh, the wi wider world. Uh, I'm with Dave Ehrenberg, and it's been a big week for him, to say the least. And we'll get to the bigger thing a little bit later, but we'll talk about the more uh, general topic now. It's a big week for you as a Dolphins fan because of uh, something that happened to a certain team that's been winning the AFC East just about every year, this century. And yeah. I know you have some opinions there. Yeah, my friend... Uh and it's great to be with you, Adam. My friend, great to be with you, especially on thank this you. occasion. I've got a friend, Joseph Abruzzo, a close friend of mine. He's a state senator. He lives down in South Florida. And he said, hey, even though you're a Dolphin fan, Aaron Berg, you've got to admit the punishment against Brady was unfair and the Patriots was unfair. And I said, don't make those assumptions. I, like a lot of people, think the punishments were fair. And, yeah, they may get reduced to two games. I can see that. But, look, you know, the, the fact that this was not their first time means something. You know, the repeat offender. Everyone knew that they were all about cheating back in the whole, uh, the first time around when they had the secret cameras, secret videos and mm -hmm. audios. They, we, we knew about that. Uh, they called him Bella Cheat, right? And, but you know what? I mean, yeah, in case people are listening who don't know you, you're the state attorney for Palm Beach County, yes, Florida. Yes. One of the biggest counties in Florida. Just when people don't know who you are, lifelong Dolphins fan, and obviously you deal with law issues quite a bit. So you, have, right. you know what you're talking about besides well, being a Dolphins fan. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, when we prosecute people in our office, it makes a difference if someone is a first-time offender or if mm. someone has been through it, been through diversion already, and then did it again. You know, we are understanding a lot of times, especially first-time nonviolent offenses, we will oftentimes put them through diversion. You know, there's all these um, alternatives to prosecution because we realize that otherwise good people make a mistake. But, you know, when you act so arrogantly to Again, break the rules, whether it was major or minor, but you b break the rules and you just seem so supercilious about it, so arrogant. Uh, and, and, you know, Tom Brady with, with his, uh, his arrogant dismissal of... He was being cute in being that cute. press conference. Oh, it was like he was a joke. You know, and that's part of it. Not only is there is, is their attitude, not only is it that it's the repeat offenders, but now you have the specter of Roger Goodell clamping down on other smaller offenses uh, in the NFL. You know, P uh, the, he, has, he has made it a, uh, and, and has had the reputation of being tough on players, especially in, among some athletes. You know, you, they didn't want to see him act tough um, on some athletes, but then you have the Patriots, the golden boy, Tom Brady, getting off with nothing. And so, you know, it, it's more like, I think there's a, there's a sense around the league that the Patriots have a different set of rules that they play by, and this was their just desserts. I think it's outrageous, personally. I think uh, the suspension is way too light, not just bitter because the Patriots beat the Eagles, perhaps cheating in two different ways, <laughs> in, uh, in, in the Super Bowl in January or February 2005. But, I mean, not to make light of domestic violence, but it doesn't affect what goes on in the game. These are testosterone-driven person. I'm not excusing it. Ray Rice is effectively banned for life for something for which he was not even arrested, for which she was not even hurt. And Brady directly affected the integrity of the game. He changed the outcomes quite possibly of entire seasons. Well, he treated, Ray, Roger Goodell treated Ray Rice, uh, his actions as a minor offense at the beginning. And then when they saw the videotape, they realized how uh, devastating it was not, for, for so many reasons and how serious it was. And Wait, I think the they videotape needed... confirmed exactly what most people yes, thought did I know, happen. I know. You know, you have Greg Oden doing probably something very similar. I don't even know uh, about that. Greg Oden, a uh, basketball player, used to play for the Heat. Right. Uh, Ohio State grad. He, uh, well, he didn't graduate, but Ohio State player. You know, he had uh, he had a domestic violence incident, and who knows, it was probably pretty similar to Ray Rice's, except there was no videotape, and so the world moves on. But the videotape is so powerful, and that's why you have you have Roger Goodell being compelled. If well, you thought about it, of what you probably thought would have happened. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the original suspension of two games was ridiculously light for Ray mm -hmm. Rice's uh, actions. Uh, then, but People are looking around. They say, all right, Ray Rice gets suspended for the year. Tom Brady again, you know, the Patriots again, and he's going to get nothing. And that's what the thinking was. And so you got to instill confidence amongst the players that you're going to treat everyone mm -hmm. equally. You're not going to give special treatment to some players and not others and not some teams and not others. And so I thought it was it was a fair punishment. And even if it's reduced to two games, I still think it's, it's fair just because it has been recognized now that they did cheat, more probable than not, okay, and uh, they're embarrassed. No, no one's going to change their mind now. It, people have assumed now that the Patriots are cheaters, 
and nothing that happens from here on out is going to change their minds. Let me have a question. Now that you got married this week, which is, yeah. I was not even alluding it to at first, but I figure people will see that post on our classes page. Congratulations again on that. Thank you. What do you tell kids, which hopefully you will have soon with your lovely new wife, Lynn? I mean, what do you, if you're, you're playing up the sports the whole time and uh, with kids, what do you say? Cheaters win? I mean, with Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, don't use violence against people. It's pretty straightforward enough. But you see how much Brady prospered. Um, it really sends the wrong message. This is cheating. I mean, Pete Rose, remember what happened to him. He's been banned for life, essentially. I know from being from the Philadelphia area, he's a degenerate. And a lot of things that had no effect on baseball, but may have entered into the thinking. And he may have bet on the Reds and they're just not telling on us. Or met bet against the Reds and they're not telling us. But, I mean... Look at the numbers of fumbles the Patriots had over the last decade or so, which are ridiculously low, with a whole series of running backs. It's not like they had one talented running back with big hands or something who would not fumble the ball. I mean, there's, that's what the thing was. It's the fumbles that didn't happen gives an advantage in a game. And it worked. Well, they got away with it. Yeah, I mean, Brady, though, is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Regardless of this, he's uh, one of the best of all time. But his legacy is forever tarnished, and that's something he'll never be able to get back. So... Yeah, he can have the Super Bowls, but ultimately there's going to be an asterisk in a lot of people's minds. And so that's why I think that all this is going to have a very lasting effect upon their legacy. And so the punishment is fair. I'm not thinking, oh, they got away with it. They didn't get away with it. They're going to have to deal did. with this forever. <laughs> Belichick and Brady will always have that asterisk in many people's minds next to their names forever. And do you think they'll feel bad about it? They strike me as a kind yeah. of like, hey, we won. We got away with it. Obviously, Brady feels bad enough about it that he hired a pit bull lawyer to try to defend himself. And Belichick, yeah, I think that uh, people care about their legacy, sure. His legacy is uh, four Super Bowls. Yeah, but four Super Bowls, and then so, you ask people. And counting. Well, you know, you have, like, for example, you have uh, Nick Saban, a guy I'm not a fan of, you know, he's right. had, you know, he's one of the greatest college coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. You think he's happy about that? No. All he cares about, I think, is how he left the NFL, how he's seen as a failure in the NFL. These coaches, they do care about their legacies and their reputation. Um, Bel I don't know. Belichick just strikes me as win at all costs. And uh, he won. He got away with it. Uh -huh. It's a game. It's a game defend, by the way, in which Clock plays, plays a huge part. Just about every postseason game was based on injuries, including the Super Bowl, the Seattle was banged up, or a ridiculous call, well, it's, yeah, you Seattle, know, even a legal one. No, Seattle, well, Seattle doesn't have a brain cramp and do, do the, the dumbest call in the history of the Super Bowl and the last play to throw in the, but <laughs> in the if, middle of the if field. If they don't have injuries, they're, they're, the game's not close. Yeah, Seattle doesn't have all those injuries on defense. Still, Seattle's game to lose. They had that game won. All they had to do was run Marshawn Lynch, and the game was over. The Super Bowl was won, and they couldn't do that, so... You know, that one, I, I – and by the way, I'm not a Monday morning quarterback on that one. As soon as R Russell Wilson dropped back the pass, I was like, what What are you doing? And then when he's mm -hmm. through, through in the middle, like, ah! and I, I couldn't react fast enough because I couldn't believe that he was doing that. Let me uh, bring up another topic just because you follow a lot of uh, Florida sports. And this was yes. just something interesting that happened at, I don't know, which after party for your wedding this is that we saw <laughs> something at. But I'll let you describe the situation, okay. which blew me as a non-South Floridian away. I mean, just – the, well, I'll let you tell about it. It was shocking what happened today. Well, the fact that my, uh, Mike Raymond was fired as the Marlins. Resident, yeah. uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. So it's, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long week. Oh, man. Yeah, Mike Redmond was fired as uh, the manager of the Marlins and in our local uh, West Palm Beach uh, sports show. They had uh, the highlights. Uh, what led the sports was not that. Uh, what led it was the local women's softball team game for FAU. And then after that, they did show the Marlins game. They showed uh, the highlights. And then after the clip, they said, and after the game, Marlins manager Mike Redmond was fired. And then they moved on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> this is like 24 minutes into the telecast. It shows the uh, lack of knowledge, respect, or maybe just lack of professionalism, I think, for some of the local sports anchors, who obviously it was a major news story that happened. And they... Did nothing to update their pre-written script to reflect the fact that a major news story had just happened. They had this script ready. They worked on it all day. Uh, the highlights they added. They said, we're going to have a Marlins highlight clip. 
But the news of Mike Remen being fired, wow, they, uh, they didn't know how to incorporate that, so they just added it as a tag after the highlights. Oh, so you're saying it's the incompetence of the people who are working in the media on a Sunday afternoon, perhaps. They're... Yes, yes, competence, laziness, whatever you want to or put it. Or just but... people don't care about the Marlins to such an extent. Well, people care enough, obviously, that they had highlights, although they were still after the women's softball highlights <laughs> for FAU. But they still care somewhat about it, and... You know, I mean, look, they paid the largest contract in the history of baseball to Giancarlo Stanton. And so people do care about the Marlins. Look, if they start winning, people are going to care. We're a front-running sports town. We know that. But, you know, it's one of those things that uh, I, I blame this on, the fact that you have uh, you have afternoon uh, weekend sportscasters for local TV who aren't that good and don't care that much. I would think anyone who's minimally competent could just write that story and rewrite it to the top of the hour. But, you know, another thing that I've heard talked about here, and obviously you were in the legislature when the whole stadium deal went out, are people just pissed at the Marlins and the spending of the money, or is that more a Dade County thing where you grew up, but you obviously are in Palm Beach County now? It's more of a Dade County thing. Okay, so the rest of the state or the South Florida area doesn't care. It's only the Dade County taxpayers who feel like they've been ripped off. Yeah, I mean, well, the stadium was built largely on the backs of Dade County taxpayers, so uh -huh. the folks here in Palm Beach County, it's it's two counties away from Dade County. We're not paying those big taxes, uh, so yeah, that's that's where it's coming from. Uh, we're we're you know look we we we're not thrilled that billionaire sports owners get get a uh, special treatment, but on the other hand, we do love our Marlins and we want them to stay here. Or at least the three thousand people who go to a game. All three thousand of us love our Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> we want them to stay. And let me ask you one other thing. Do you think my theory, and I'm hoping for this because I love the guy who was one of my favorite players since we retired last year, Raul Ibanez, who's from Miami, Cuban-American, will, and he was in much demand as a manager in the off season, but did not take a job. And by the time this is processed, we'll know what is going on with the Marlins manager situation. Do you think if they hire him, it will be a real plus in their new little Havana stadium? I don't know. I don't know how much the manager draws people to show up to the games. Freddie Gonzalez But that didn't. was before they were in Little Havana. Well, um, uh, what's his name uh, from the uh, White Sox? Uh, he couldn't Guillen. Uh, Ozzie Guillen. Not only did he not draw people to the games, he offended... Well, he was Venezuelan. He yeah, screwed still, it up at the first week. Yes, he offended the, a lot of the Cuban fans and it you know, didn't work out well. I don't think having a Cuban manager is going to make that big of a difference when your top player is a... Cuban American uh, success story, Jose Fernandez. Uh -huh. I mean, that's your top pitcher. You know, right. John Carlos Stanton obviously is your top player, but Fernandez is someone that uh, people who would care about having a Cuban American manager should care more about the way that Fernandez came to this country, how he's succeeding, how he is really a homegrown guy in that sense, and it's just very, really a, a wonderful success story. So I don't think the addition of a Cuban American manager is going to make a difference. Okay, now that we did the general topic, let me just wind up. Uh, people are probably wondering how you met your wife and a uh, little story, and congratulations once more on getting Thank married. You. By the way, feel free to make comments on this YouTube video if you have any marital advice for Dave. Like, yes, dear. I was told that a lot because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been 44 years a bachelor, and uh, this is the uh, sixth, seventh day of my married life, and so far so good. Um, I have a wonderful... Uh, companion uh, Lynn is just uh, is amazing and uh, very fortunate. And how'd you meet her again? I the met her in 2006 briefly. She was doing an appearance. She was a, a Miami Dolphins cheerleader, mm -hmm. and she was doing an appearance at a charity event, and I was at a charity event, and but she was taken, of course. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. So you know, then then uh, you know, we went our separate ways, and life happens. And then years later. I was on Facebook in 2013, single, and I saw, you know, her name came up in, like, people you may know, and so I, you know, I checked it out, and then, uh... You looked at the picture, I'm course, sure. Of course, of course, and then realized, uh, who she was and saw she was single, so I reached out to her. All right, anything else? How are we done? It's great. I was really touched, Adam, that, you know, I had this post-wedding barbecue today where I was able to have, like, 500 friends there. It was really nice, and... Uh, you showed up. Uh, I, I didn't realize you were coming, and you came down from... I did RSVP, from... like, two days ago. Well, I, I didn't see all the RSVPs. No, I know, uh, I'm kidding. I'm uh, saying, like, I think ago, other yeah. people were more prompt about it. I got an excuse to come down to Florida. Well, and even if I saw your RSVP, I wouldn't have believed that Adam Taxon from Philadelphia would come down. I mean, my it's goodness. It's not Mongolia. I mean, it's just it's another East Coast city. Still, that is a long trip for you to come down, and it, it was really touching to do it. So I'm honored that you came. I'm honored That's to be on invitation. your... 
your YouTube video and yeah. and uh, you know let's uh, stay in touch, my friend. All right.